you're convinced most of the time that what you're reading is factual. It's not fiction. Maybe names have changed, but uh, here I begin to wonder uh, whether John Wareham has access to very privileged information and whether all of this isn't in fact true. I know this is a new take on uh, the man and the collateral damage of the man and his actions and to try to go inside of that psyche and that situation. Uh, he's one of those accidents that happen in a democracy, totally unfit uh, to, to lead or represent the United States of America. It would be surprising if uh, George Bush Jr. were not an active alcoholic actually because um, given his upbringing, given the fact that he was an alcoholic in the past and the fact that he's received no treatment for it. Bush has all the symptoms of a confirmed drinker. He never went dry. This is, yeah. And then there's that sense of righteousness. And you want to make sure that everybody, that you, not alone are you right, but you must be wrong. And the world must know that I am right and that you are wrong. The alcoholism is really only a symptom of the underlying problems that George Bush Jr. had to deal with. It was his way of dealing with these issues which he did not otherwise wish to address. There was this intrigue in the White House to, uh, at the last moment, try to at least salvage the credibility of the United States on the world stage. Well, and this becomes clear in the course of the book to uh, George Bush. So again, one is leading him through a process of enlightenment, actually. This book belongs to a very special class of fiction. I think nowadays we would call it hyperfiction. And at the end, I think, oh, this isn't about Bush, alcoholism. It's about the damage, the collateral damage of this pathetic wretch in the White House. You take the, the, the brandy out of the fruitcake, you still got a fucking fruitcake. If it... Well, if you look at John Wareham, if you've participated in John Wareham's sessions, he can sit with a person that has uh, all the attributes of being the most centered, and complete person and be with them in a little while and say, listen, I've enjoyed talking to you, but there's something you need to know. You're so damn covert, it's going to kill you. But it is for a shot at eternal glory, surely, that power-hungry players so willingly demean themselves. To be anointed leader of the free world can be a ticket to immortality, a toy which people cry for, and on their knees apply for, dispute, contend, and lie for, and if allowed would be right proud to lay right down and die for.